Demand for consumer electronics has risen sharply during the coronavirus pandemic, leading to a shortage of semiconductor chips. As a result, the global automotive, cell phone, notebook, and solar industries are facing shortages in production or supply. China is the world's largest semiconductor market. Currently, it relies on foreign imports for more than 80% of its computer chips. The Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, has pumped huge amounts of money into the chip manufacturing industry. But last year, several major semiconductor projects came to a halt. China recently announced a 10-year plan to invest trillions in new semiconductor factories, hoping to surpass the United States by the end of the decade. Now, the Biden administration is loosening semiconductor export restrictions enacted under former President Trump. But will this be enough to help Beijing realize its dream of becoming a tech superpower? This was one of Li Keqiang's goals for the next decade highlighted in his government report at the two sessions' leadership meetings in March. Around the same time, China's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology also announced that it would take fresh steps to vigorously bolster the chip industry over the next five years. To become a global technology powerhouse, Beijing must break away from its dependence on foreign semiconductors. China has long relied on imports. According to market research from IC Insights, the proportion of chips that were produced, independent and domestically controlled, had a chip production rate that was 5.9% in 2020, after deducting the contribution of foreign companies producing in China. The boom of semiconductor investment led by the Chinese government started in 2020, with more than 50,000 Chinese companies registering for semiconductor-related businesses, raising a total of RMB 250 billion in capital. However, in just over a year, a total of six multi-billion dollar star semiconductor projects in China have come to a halt. This includes the Guangzhou 12-inch wafer production line by Guangdong Haixin IC, which was established in March 2020. Among which, the most noted case is Wuhan Hongxin Semiconductor, HSMC. In March, this star company issued a notice to lay off all its employees, turning a claimed RMB 100 billion investment into a bubble in just three years. HSMC was founded in November 2017 and boasted an investment of RMB 128 billion. The company had tapped Shang Yi Chiang as its CEO. Chiang was a senior vice president and co chief operating officer overseeing research and development at Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, or TSMC. He was also a key aide to TSMC's founder, Morris Chong. TSMC is the world's leading computer chip producer. In 2019, China managed to poach more than 100 engineers and managers from TSMC, half of whom went to Wuhan HSMC. The annual salary offered was 2 to 2.5 times higher than at TSMC. HSMC also imported lithography machines from ASML in the Netherlands. But several years passed and HSMC failed to produce a single chip. The capital chain for the project is now broken. This January, the Dutch lithography machine was also mortgaged to a rural commercial bank in Wuhan, from which HSMC took out a loan for 580 million yuan. The lithography machine is in brand new condition and has not yet been commissioned. Due to this failed venture, HSMC incurred a debt of more than 90 million yuan. According to Chinese media reports, the entire HSMC project may have been a scam used to defraud the Wuhan city government of its investment. The project set an impossible goal from the beginning, claiming to build 14 nanometer and 7 nanometer production lines with an annual production capacity of 60,000 wafers. It also made the unrealistic boast that its production line simulation staff team has already started to focus on the 3 nanometer process. Currently, the only companies that even have a 7 nanometer process are Samsung and TSMC. Although HSMC folded, the company's original executives have since become extremely rich. They continue to create chip companies with the same tactics in cooperation with local governments in other provinces. 
There is likely no shortage of such cases in China. According to data from the Chinese website Tianyan Cha, more than 200 integrated chip companies are set up in China every day. Industry sources revealed that as long as the scope of business is related to chips, they can get local tax breaks or access to financing. So many companies try to rub off on the IC fever, mostly by scamming for funding. China Economic Weekly reports that companies with no experience, technology, nor talents are flooding into the chip industry. After acquiring capital, some have switched to other industries such as construction, garments, cement, seafood, and auto parts, which have no connection with the chip industry. Poorly conceived government subsidies have turned the semiconductor industry into a den of fraud. In the early 2000s, a man named Chen Jin took advantage of a trip to the U.S. He asked an acquaintance to download the source of a chip from Motorola and purchased a batch of Motorola DSP 56800 series chips in the U.S. He then hired a renovation worker to sand down the original Motorola logo on the chip and replaced it with the Hanshin logo. The counterfeit chip easily passed the appraisal of the Chinese expert panel at the launch and cheated the Chinese government of 1.1 billion U.S. dollars in research funds. On February 26, 2003, the launch of Hanshin One was held, hosted by the Information Office of Shanghai Municipality. It was announced to the public that Hanshin One was a chip developed by China independently. It became a source of national pride, but in 2006. The fraud was revealed. Amazingly, Chen Jin has not been prosecuted to date and is still active in the Chinese chip industry, running his own company. Others who aided him in his fraud have gone on to become senior university leaders. Perhaps the massive sum of 1.1 billion U.S. dollars was enough to weave a powerful relationship network. Top Chinese officials have also admitted in public that the development of China's chip industry suffers from blind investment and failed projects. The Communist Party leaders expect Chinese researchers to sharpen their high-tech swords in 10 years. Research teams are expected to endure a lonely and humble life for those 10 years. But how many people would be willing to do honest work when more profit could be generated through fraud? It is foreseeable that the craze for manufacturing chips in China will not cool down and will continue to advance on a road full of pitfalls. In the past, whatever progress China made in the field relied heavily on plagiarism and poaching, without building genuine expertise in R and D. The Trump administration targeted China's chip weakness, restricting exports of semiconductors that are critical for Chinese production of high-end consumer electronics. In December 2020, America blacklisted SMIC, China's largest chip maker. The U.S. Department of Commerce stated at the time that the action against SMIC stemmed from concerns that the CCP was using civilian technology for military purposes, and that there were ties between SMIC and Chinese military companies. Prior to that, the Trump administration had already imposed restrictions on U.S. equipment makers selling high-end semiconductor equipment to Chinese customers. Industry experts believe that under the U.S. embargo, it is difficult for almost all chip manufacturers to circumvent the U.S. technology and equipment restrictions. Beijing had planned to reach 40% and 70% domestic chip production by 2020 and 2025, respectively. In 2020, the actual domestic chip production rate was just 5.9%. But things may change under the Biden administration. Ah, uh, need to, uh, in the global scale, to strengthen cooperation. 共同打造芯片产业链，呃，不仅为中国的呃这个信息化社会发发展提供支撑，也为全球的啊信息化发展呢提供有力的支持，啊，这是中国政府啊，也中国国家层面上也给予大力的呃扶持。On several occasions, senior Chinese officials have expressed their desire to cooperate with countries and regions, including the U.S., Europe, and other developing countries, in the manufacturing of chips. Under Biden, the U.S. has shown ambiguity regarding Chinese chip restrictions. 
On March 1, the Biden administration's National Security Council on Artificial Intelligence released a report recommending that the U.S. join the Netherlands and Japan in denying export licenses to China for key chip manufacturing equipment. The report points out that the key factor still remains in joining efforts with Japanese companies Nikon and Canon, as well as equipment vendors from other countries such as ASML in the Netherlands to limit the export of chip manufacturing equipment to China. But on the other hand, four different departments, including the Department of Commerce, Defense, Energy, and the Department of State, have now granted the leading U.S. equipment vendor a license to supply 14 nanometer semiconductor equipment to SMIC. In addition, the key equipment for selective epitaxial growth, SEG, in 14 nanometer nodes has also been approved for export by the Biden administration. SMIC's most advanced process level is 14 nanometers, and the company just reached 14 nanometer mass production in 2019. However, their production process and equipment lag behind that of foreign chip companies, especially Taiwanese chip producers. The ability to import foreign 14 nanometer chips is sure to give SMIC some valuable breathing space. That said, SMIC is still barred from buying technology nodes 10 nanometers or better. In 2019, the Trump administration had pressured Dutch officials to cancel the sale of a lithography machine to SMIC by its top chip equipment vendor, ASML. According to Dutch government records, Dutch officials had not approved a license to ship lithography tools to China until the end of February 2021. But now, ASML has announced an extension of its sales agreement to SMIC through the end of this year to sell 1.2 billion US dollars worth of machines to China. China's huge chip market is hugely attractive to foreign producers. As introduced earlier, the CCP expects to make chips of their own, and they have long hoped to do so using unconventional and dubious shortcuts. For example, consider Fujian Jinhua Integrated Circuit Company Limited, or Jinhua in short. When manufacturing commercial chips, dynamic random memory, DRAM, is very important. In 2014, China invested 10 billion US dollars to establish three memory manufacturing companies, including Jinhua, which is responsible for producing general purpose memory chips. Jinhua poached technical staff from Micron Technology in the US and had stolen more than 900 technical secrets and patent files from Micron. SMIC was founded in 2004. One of its most important founders is Shang Yi Chang, who used to work at TSMC in Taiwan. The Chinese media has dubbed him the father of Chinese semiconductors and credited him with the miraculous rise of SMIC. TSMC sued SMIC for patent infringement and leakage of trade secrets. At the end of 2009, TSMC won the lawsuit and SMIC was fined US 200 million and 10% of SMIC shares and the then president of SMIC, Shang Yi Chang, was forced to step down. TSMC is clearly luckier than Nortel, a Canadian telecommunications and data networking equipment manufacturer. Nortel had been a huge success in the 1970s and 80s, playing a leading role in the development of digital telephone networks around the world. In the late 1990s, Canadian intelligence agencies alerted Nortel to Chinese espionage, but Nortel failed to take it seriously. 1,400 documents were stolen from Nortel's LiveLink servers over a period of approximately six months in 2004. Company security consultant Brian Shields, who investigated the matter, found that the intrusion into Nortel's internal computer network probably began in the late 1990s, with most of the hacks traced to Chinese IP addresses and four internet service providers. Most of Nortel's stolen data ended up at ISPs in Shanghai. In the same period, Huawei rose rapidly in the telecommunications industry. In 2005, Huawei won part of the UK telecommunications company BT Group's massive 21st century network project, while Nortel was ruled out on it. In 2008, Huawei won major contracts with two major Canadian phone companies, Telus and Bell. In January 2009, Nortel filed for bankruptcy protection. <laughs> 让老外走进来技术带进来车带进来钱带进来智慧带进来中国政府没法抄袭老外但是中国政府干嘛可以鼓励老百姓创业和老外干嘛合伙学会单干合伙学会单干合伙学会单干
我们全部单干了。最后回头一看，厂房攒了，设备攒了，技术攒了，专利攒了，产品攒了，市场攒了，品牌攒了，老外全做完了。现在，所以我们的啊，杨杨外长和我们的王外长。才有资格和美国在谈判的时候才那么强硬，你们是没有资格呵呵这么给我谈话的。你发现回头看，咱四十年就干两次抄袭，一路抄到世界第一排。我们是野蛮抄袭、野蛮复制，什么知识产权，什么专利技术，高再说。Let's take a look at the gap between China and the world. China's official media, Xinhua News Agency, reported on March 17 that China's chip manufacturing has made another breakthrough, covering the process segment to 28 nanometer process chips. That is to say, China can only reliably manufacture 28 nanometer chips, far behind TSMC's 7 nanometer process. With the development of advanced, expensive processes, only three companies remain in the market. That is, TSMC, Samsung, and Intel. Many others were forced out. Two fabs that represent 20 billion of new capital investment, that represent 3,000 new jobs for us, 3,000 new construction workers, and 15,000 new long-term jobs in the area. We've seen the growing demand for semiconductors, the digitization of the world, the acceleration of that in the global pandemic has radically accelerated the need for semiconductors. Against that, the world needs a balanced supply chain available across the world. The rest of the manufacturers are fading out of the field of advanced semiconductor logic process technology. TSMC and Samsung are expected to widen the distance between their rivals in advanced process technology. TSMC and Samsung have started mass production of 7 nanometer chips and are working on 5 nanometers. Intel is expected to mass produce 7 nanometer chips. TSMC and Samsung are expected to hold steady as world leaders in advanced semiconductor technologies and will be the cornerstone of all future high-end consumer electronics as well as commercial and military systems. The 2021 edition of the IC Insights report, released in January, concluded that China would have to spend 150 billion over the next five years to catch up with TSMC and Samsung in terms of semiconductor technology. At present, the R&D budget of the People's Republic of China is almost equal to that of the United States. But even with huge capital investment, IC Insights has suggested that the CCP may not succeed in reaching its goal, as China is under U.S. trade sanctions that prohibit the export of some key process equipment. So, how will China realize its chip dreams in the future? Given the large gap in chip technology, will the CCP abandon the massive technology theft it's employed over the past few decades? Intel is primarily a technology company, bringing the right team back together, right? So I think he said they'll focus on meritocracy.、Uh, they are bringing some of the key、uh, Pentium Nine engineers from Grand Hinton to Sunil Shenoy, who was heading、uh, data center before.、Uh, all of them back, and、uh, you have the Department of Defense and the U.S. government pushing for more domestic IP, especially from national security standpoint. So I think the timing was perfect. The strategy is good.、Um, I think.、Uh, As of now, TSMC and other Taiwanese companies have begun ramping up production of vital chips to address the global shortage. The global shortage of automotive chips has elevated Taiwan's strategic importance to Western governments. Taiwan's semiconductor industry is the second largest in the world by sales volume, after the United States. Despite being diplomatically isolated by communist China, Taiwan has excelled in establishing itself as a hub of expertise and a global semiconductor manufacturer. This is also considered to be one of the achievements resulting from the new economic initiatives and active dialogue with Taiwan that began in the final year of the Trump administration. Mainland China and Taiwan are both run by Chinese. The only difference is one is governed by the Communist Party and the other isn't. If the U.S. government wishes to work with its allies to counter the CCP's infiltration and domination ambitions while avoiding the least amount of military conflict, an effective approach would be to keep Beijing and its semiconductor dream in check. We would like to invite you to subscribe. We strive to bring you the latest news, commentary, and insights out of China. Be sure to click the bell as well so that you're notified when we post new content. Now, moving on.